In this video, we'll focus on publishing APIs and features that may be of interest after your API is deployed. We'll start with an overview of the publishing process and what this can look like for both the producer and consumers of an API. We'll then cover Postman's monitoring and reporting capabilities and end with an overview of the Postman API and how it might be a useful addition to your workflows. In this graphic, we've outlined an example API lifecycle between producers and consumers. While your life cycle may vary a bit between the stages outlined here, an important part of any life cycle is the handoff you see in the center. As an API producer, how are your APIs made available for consumers to evaluate and eventually integrate into their workflows? Let's dive into Postman's API Builder to see how we can facilitate this handoff within the platform and ensure your releases stay organized, discoverable, and accessible to the right people. When working in the API Builder, once you have a version of your API ready for consumers to use, you can publish that version by clicking this Publish button. Here, you're able to name your version and add any release notes. You can choose to include any associated collections or definition files and choose whether or not to publish it on the private API network so that your teammates can discover and work with this API internally. If you do choose to publish your API to the private API network, each new version that is created will automatically be added to the network as well. Once you click Publish, Postman will create a snapshot of the resources you selected, allowing viewers to see only released versions and editors to switch between published and live versions of the API. To edit or delete a version, you can click into the version details. Do keep in mind that if your API is linked to a version control repository like GitHub, your work is stored in the repository and needs to be synced with your version control system for others to be able to see your changes in the Postman app. However, publishing a version syncs the selected elements to your workspace in the Postman cloud. Also note that in previous versions of Postman, versions were major iterations of your API that you could work on at the same time. However, with Postman version 10, published API versions are static representations of your API that consumers can reference. If you need to work on more than one major iteration of your API in Postman in version 10, we recommend creating separate APIs. If you use one of several popular gateway options that Postman supports, you can connect that to your API in Postman as well to keep tabs on your API deployment status and history from within the Postman app. To connect to a gateway from the APIs tab, select deployments, then your gateway of choice, and enter the required information to complete the setup. Once you're connected, you'll be able to see information about your deployments. If I switch users to someone coming to this workspace with only the workspace viewer role, You'll see that I'm directed to the most recently published version, and then I have the option to switch between previously published versions so I can see how this API has evolved over time. When I select a version, I'm able to see the API schema and any associated resource and fork the collections I'd like to work with. If this version was published to the private API network, I can also see the same information there. If there isn't a published version of this API, I won't be able to see any of the associated definition files or resources. Workspace viewers also won't be able to view any of your API builder integrations. Once your API is up and running, Postman's collection-based monitors can help ensure that it is functioning as expected by running your collections at a specified interval and alerting you to any outages or test failures. To set up a collection-based monitor, click New, then Monitor, then you can fill in details of your monitor run, including the collection, environment, frequency, desired region, and notification options if you and your team would like to be notified for failures or errors. There are also a few more advanced configuration options available, including uploading a data file if you'd like the monitor to run your tests with multiple sets of values. Once you have your monitor set up, you'll be able to view the results in the monitoring dashboard, accessible from the left sidebar. Here, you can see the summary of your past runs over time. Each bar represents a collection run, and a red bar indicates that there were either failed tests or errors during the run. Filters can help you narrow in on a specific request or run type, and clicking into the run will show you the test results and console logs to help you debug what went wrong. Postman's reporting feature, found on the homepage and the team information section on the left, allows you to visualize how your team is using Postman. These reports can give insights into your API's test results, documentation, and monitoring coverage, among other statistics. 
As you navigate through the sidebar, you'll find sections focused on team activity, all APIs, specific APIs, security and governance, and token scanning. If we dig into a report for a specific API, we can see information about its responses and test status over time. As you navigate through the reports, you can often click into a data point to drill down into a more detailed view. Note that you'll only be able to access data that's available to you based on the level of access that you have for a given resource. If you don't have permission to access an element, the data visualizations will still display the correct number of elements, but you just won't be able to see the element name or other related information. As you start to get more comfortable with Postman and integrate it into your existing workflows or create new ones, you may come across the need to automate some of your Postman work. Postman has its own API, which can programmatically access your Postman data and perform actions like adding or updating collections, querying the private API network, among other things. To find the Postman API, navigate to the Postman public workspace and look for the Postman API collection. From here, you can browse the documentation on the folders and requests to find what you need and view the example responses to see a preview of the data that will be returned. Note that you'll need a Postman API key to use this API. To wrap up, let's recap what we've covered. We looked at publishing API versions as a producer and what this looks like from the consumer perspective. We looked at how to keep an eye on your APIs with Postman monitors and how to dig deeper into your data with the reporting dashboard. Finally, we showed how to get started with the Postman API to start automating your workflows. Thanks for watching.